Hello, hi there. Welcome to another King's Daily. I'm Marcus from the Leaders here at King's Church Norwich, uh, where we're reading through the Gospel of John together. And I trust it's being a blessing to you as much as it is to me and to us as we uh, open God's Word together each day. Uh, with so many voices wanting to grab our attention and shape our thinking, it's important, uh, vital really, to regularly take time to listen to what God wants to say to us to let the truth of his word feed and transform us so let's read from john chapter 16 starting at verse 16. this is jesus speaking a little while and you will see me no longer and again a little while and you will see me so some of his disciples said to one another what is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me. And again a little while and you will see me. And because I'm going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Now Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, is this what you're asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, a little while and you will not see me and again a little while and you will see me truly truly I say to you you will weep and lament but the world will rejoice you will be sorrowful but your sorrow will turn to joy when a woman is giving birth she has sorrow because her hour has come but when she has delivered the baby she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world so also you have sorrow now but i will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you in that day you will ask nothing of me truly truly i say to you whatever you ask of the father in my name he will give it to you until now you have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full so um, the key phrase here it seems to me is uh, a little while and you will not see me and again a little while and you will see me it's repeated uh, three and a bit times i think in this passage so it's kind of uh, stands out as important the disciples say it and jesus says it and uh, it's it stands out for us as we read this passage and what an interesting and intriguing statement it is um certainly not surprising that it puzzled the disciples but we have a bit of an advantage over them in that we know what happened um, just a little while later and um, a few hours and a few days later on we know what was about to happen indeed what did happen jesus is saying uh, he is going to disappear from their sight and then after a brief period of time they will see him again we know a few hours later that he was crucified and died and the disciples wept uh, while both the, the Jewish and Gentile world rejoiced, certainly the leaders. And, uh, and then just a few short days later, uh, Jesus rose bodily from the dead and the disciples saw him again and they rejoiced. But things uh, are not now as they once were. Things have changed this event uh, Jesus's disappearing and reappearing changes things. It brings into being a new state of affairs. This wonderful new, new dynamic and situation. And Jesus here likens the events to a mother giving birth. Her pain is followed by joy at a new birth. And as any new parents know, once a child is born, life will never be the same again. See, Jesus' death and resurrection usher in a new and wonderful dynamic uh, in the disciples' relationship with God. It's uh, a relationship that will be characterised by joy. Jesus talks a lot about joy here, doesn't he? Jesus' death and resurrection open up an eternal source of joy for his followers. Why is that? Well, their sin is paid for. Uh, our sin is paid for. Death is beaten. Um, our, our 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 death that we uh, that 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 would come to us not just a physical death but this this death of the soul which is to do with a separation from God an eternal separation from God 
this uh, this has been beaten and overcome. Jesus deals with our sin, and Jesus also uh, he he makes a way by which we don't have to to endure this eternal soul death, this this life without God. He, his death and resurrection wins for us, makes possible for us to enter into an eternal life with God. Um, and even death of the body is, a, is not a barrier to that. And uh, just as Jesus is raised uh, with a new resurrection body, imperishable, so one day our body will be raised. Nothing can take away this from us. Not hardship, nor famine, nor sword, nor uh, even death of the body. N nothing can take away this wonderful uh, new uh, relationship that we have been brought into with our sins forgiven and death beaten now but this this age this period of time that's been ushered in will be characterized by something else the disciples will no longer ask Jesus for anything that's what he says to them rather the, with the coming of the spirit the spirit of adoption they will ask the father in Jesus's name they are, in a sense, asking in him, in Jesus, as sons themselves. Um, his relationship and access to the Father, Jesus' relationship and access to the Father, becomes theirs, becomes ours. Uh, we're in, well, that's what happens when we're in Christ. We have, we have his wonderful access to the Father and relationship with the Father as, as a son, as sons and daughters, as children of God. And this this will be a time this this now this new time this time that we are in now will be a an age where God's people will know God as their loving heavenly Father just as Jesus called God Abba Father uh, so will they so will we so do we and here joy goes to another level entirely not just the joy of being saved from death not just the joy of having eternal life but the joy of knowing God as our loving heavenly father now as I've said I believe Jesus is speaking about his imminent death and bodily resurrection however I think we can see some further fulfillment of uh, of these words of what he says or at least a future application of the principle that's, uh, that's underneath it, which is often the case, I think, with, uh, with prophecy. It has a, a short-term specific application, but also a greater long-term, uh, with greater long-term fulfillments, like ripples expanding out from a stone that's been plopped into uh, the water. So you, you see Jesus, he did um, leave his disciples again. I mean, he, he left his disciples when he went to the cross and he died and he did return. But he, he, he was ascended later on. Uh, he had ascended to be with his father. They saw him go up into the, into the sky and disappear. Um, after his, after, this was after his resurrection. But he will come back again. At the end of the age, he will physically return. We will physically see him. And all evil will be banished and everything will be renewed and the eternal age will be ushered in and our joy will go off the scale as we, unhindered by lingering sin, come to know the full extent of God's love for us in Christ as we know him just as he now knows us. But none of that, none of that kind of future fulfilment really should diminish what we have right now. We, we have by the Spirit a foretaste, a down payment of these, of these things um, in, in the presence of the Spirit with us, in the, in the dwelling of God in us by the Spirit. And we can know the joy of sins forgiven and the joy of knowing God as our loving Heavenly Father. And no one can take that away from us, not even now, nothing can take that joy away from from us though we go through difficult situations and challenges here is a joy that cannot be taken away so let's pray thank you heavenly father for the joy of knowing that our sin has been removed that by uh, the death and resurrection of your son you've made a way for us to be forgiven and adopted into your family 
We thank you for the joy of being loved by you, a joy that uh, no one can take away. And I pray uh, today that the spirit of adoption in us would embolden us as we approach your throne and ask for grace, both for ourselves and for others in this time of need, in our time of need. And we ask for your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Well, God bless you, church family. Have a great day.